Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today we got to talk about the next monopoly in big tech, and obviously that's got to be artificial intelligence. And if you're as old as me, you've been through quite a lot of monopoly and antitrust proceedings by the U.S. government and other major institutions like the EU when it comes to big tech. First there was Microsoft, then the browser wars, Netscape versus Internet Explorer, and, and all those kinds of things where Microsoft was pretty much on every desktop system out there, uh, you know, and that's, they're pretty still dominant, you know, in that in that sense. Then there was Google with search engines and all of that, really revealing how much they're paying Apple to be that dominant search engine. Imagine being a startup and not having that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's Facebook, there's other monopolies out there as well, Amazon, et cetera. But AI is the next one that we're going to have to talk about and we'll see what happens because Amazon does pretty much seem to be a monopoly and they really are stifling competition and they've got an army of lawyers to keep them out of court or at least keep the ball moving as they continue to do that. Same with Google and the others. And so obviously I'm not a big fan of monopolies because they tend to stifle innovation and competition. But let's talk about AI. And for the backdrop of this, and I thought this was actually really interesting and I thought it was a good write-up in the Washington Post by uh, Cristiano Limo, uh, Lima, excuse me, and David D. Mafletta, or Malfetta, excuse me on that one, David. But here's what's going on. Now, you probably heard the news about Sam Altman and his plan to join basically the tech giant Microsoft, uh, essentially after he got booted uh, as the uh, essentially the face of ChatGPT and OpenAI. And now that is reigniting concern that control over AI tools is becoming too concentrated among a small number of Silicon Valley titans. And I'm going to talk about that off tangent when I when I get off their notes. Now, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella uh, basically tweeted early uh, Monday that both Altman and Greg Brockman, if you don't know who he is, he's the former president of OpenAI who resigned in solidarity with Altman on that Friday, are going to be joining Microsoft to lead a new advanced AI research team, according to Microsoft CEO. Now, nearly all of uh, OpenAI's employees have basically threatened to quit unless Mr. Altman is reinstated, and that obviously raises a specter that much of its workforce could soon decamp for one of these tech giants and a lot of them are basically saying well we'll just go to microsoft and we'll follow sam and microsoft's like come on in the water's great you know and there we go so that's the backdrop of this but obviously and this was also pointed on the article there's already calls that this is potentially a big antitrust move given the prominence of both microsoft and open ai but this move could also allow microsoft to and i quote acquire open ai's intellectual property with zero federal oversight or the need for regulatory approval and that is according to george rackus executive director of the advocacy group next gen competition in a statement obviously on this situation now open ai already shares for the record most of its important technology with Microsoft as the two companies have a partnership. If I recall, Microsoft invested about a billion dollars or so into OpenAI something like a year ago or as ChatGPT was blowing up within the last year. And in return, Microsoft has given OpenAI access to its massive data centers, which is beyond important when you are basically training artificial intelligence at the large language model and that is crazy money and so microsoft giving data centers or giving that computing power to open ai is a huge cost saving so they've had a very deep partnership from the beginning and that's just it if i were to create an artificial intelligence from scratch i need firepower to train that thing to even possibly compete with this and so you are looking at at at, at a very heavy startup costs on infrastructure on computing time not to mention uh you know basically the people that would put it together tune it the people that would continuously feed it information and tweak it and keep it on its path and all of that and so that's obviously a huge thing now the options for OpenAI are simply here. They they would either need to continue with their partnership with Microsoft, even though they just lost all their staff to Microsoft, or find another investor and then obviously a data center partner with that kind of firepower if they wanted to con uh, continue to train the chat GPTs of the world, uh, you know, moving forward. More than 20 consumer groups last week, interestingly enough, also urged the FTC or Federal Trade Commission and Justice Department to investigate whether some of these recent acquisitions of AI by big tech are actually violating antitrust laws. You know, you know, Microsoft has spun things up. Amazon spun things up. Google spun things up. The Brave browser now has uh, an AI called Leo that you can talk to. And I didn't even know they were that 
big, but they're basing it on Llama. Facebook uh, has got theirs. Meta, as they're calling it, Meta AI. I've talked about that as well. These are obviously huge things. Now, the letter that was sent suggested that Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and the other big boys may be investing in, uh, basically, rather may be investing in rather than acquiring some startups as essentially a strategic choice uh, choice to avoid regulatory blowback. In other words, uh, Microsoft can root around the couch cushions in the front, you know, reception area of uh, one Redmond Way, find a billion dollars, give it to OpenAI, and and here we are. They own a good chunk of it. They're controlling a good chunk of it by virtue of that, but they're not actually owners. They're partners. Interesting, interesting tactics. So from the government side of things, the FTC, specifically their officials, are concerned that major tech companies may carefully be structuring these investments like we just talked about, including artificial intelligence, in an attempt to avoid that kind of regulatory scrutiny. And that's according to a person talking to the Washington Post. And so I think this is going to be one of those things that as we are looking at it, we're all going to be saying, hey, here, all the flags, everything is there for a monopoly. But Google is spinning up BARD. We've got OpenAI and Microsoft on the other side. Uh, I believe NVIDIA is working on one. There, there's a few others out there. And so we're going to see what actually, uh, you know, surfaces to the, you know, bubbles up to the top here with this. But but the last thing we need is consolidation because Lord knows we don't need one AI running running the world, you know, if you will. Let's say OpenAI and Microsoft win that and God forbid they call it Skynet. And here we go. So we're going to see what happens, uh, you know, with this. But I do think this is ripe for monopoly. And my only biggest, con my only concern with this, my biggest problem with this is the government tends to slap fines on things, and it usually doesn't go that much further. I can't remember the last time they fo like fully broke up, uh, you know, a company or or companies have strategically broken themselves up to try to avoid these things without really fully breaking up. So it would be nice to see them actually do something beyond slap a $5 billion fine on a company that, again, can root around the couch cushions in the reception area and simply come up with that cash. So we'll see. And good luck to all of us. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP, where hopefully the algorithms and the AI will put you in my feed. And uh, same with YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private and, I guess, prepare for the apocalypse. Take care.